And once we have installed JDK, first things first, let's go actually and have a look where it is located, right? Where it is downloaded. So if I'm going to go over here to the finder, I'm going to go to root. And then over here, you can see that I'm going to go to library. And if you're not doing any kind of dark magic, you should have exactly the same. And over here under the folder Java, right? We have Java virtual machines, right? And sure enough, over here, you can see that this is going to be JDK 9 that we just downloaded, right? And this is important for the next videos when we're when we actually going to be dealing with a IntelliJ, right? We're going to need to give it a path, right? If it's not going to find the path itself, right? So this is always a good thing to remember where it is that actual JDK is located. Now, another thing that I would want to show you is the J shell. Right. And if we want to run the J shell, we would need a terminal. And J shell, J shell is actually really good for testing simple Java commands. Right. So here, if I'm in a terminal, the first thing that I can always write, and I'm going to say Java, and we can just type version. Right. And this is going to give us what version of Java this is. Right. So you can see over here, this is going to be 9.0.4. Right. And if I'm going to type over here J shell, right, you can see that it says, well, command not found. Well, you might have the same, right? That's why I'm showing you over here like this. What you would need to have is actually you need to change the path, right? So I'm going to copy and paste this path over here, right? But you can obviously find it right away if you Google it just how to change the path, right, to, to the actual JDK. Just remember to actually add the correct path regarding the actual number, right, that you're downloading, right? once you have this path over here and once we again run the shell over here like this right you can see over here that now the j shell is opening right it even says over here on the top and we're going to start with the very simple java syntax right and if you don't know java then don't worry we're going to be covering this in a later videos right right now i just want to show you that actual j shell works right and we're going to start very simple i'm just going to say that this is going to be let's say string over here and I'm going to say this is going to be string, let's say, first name over here, right? And I'm going to set it to equal to, let's say, over here, Peter, Peter over here. And then the next one is going to be a string. And I'm going to say this is going to be last name, right? And this is going to be, let's say, we're going to call him Jordan over here like this. And then we're going to have over here, you can see that it says over here a mistake, right? You can see over here I added two quotes, right? So I can just go back over here, delete the last one. And now I have a last name and a first name, right? And what's happening is that Java is very strict about how you're actually writing the syntax, right? So this right away shows you that it's going to spit back the error if you actually mistyped something, right? And over here where I'm going to say that this is going to be a method to actually show our code, right? What we typed. So I'm going to say over here system, system out, and I'm going to say print ln right and over, over here i'm going to say hello there and i'm going to say that this is going to be peter jordan right so over here i'm just going to add again that this is going to be first name first name and over here we're going to have a little bit of space right and then over here uh over here like this and then we're going to have a last name right so we're going to say our last name over here and over here if we press enter right now right now it's going to say hello there peter jordan and we obviously not limited just to the strings. We can write a basic math too. So over here I'm going to say integer number, let's say one, right? And we're going to set it equal to 10. And in the J shell, if we want, right, we can move back to the last command by pressing arrow up, right? So you can see over here, this is going to be integer number one. And I can just change this. Let's say number two. And this guy is going to be number 20 over here like this. Once I press enter, right, now I have my variable saved, right, number two. And let's say over here, I'm going to say number integer, right, and I'm going to say this is going to be a result, or like this. And let's say the result is going to be number one plus number two. Number one, or here, number two, or here like this, right. Now, once we have both of them, right, over here, if I press, I have result. And over here, what I can do is I can always say, again, system out. So I'm going to say system out over here, print ln. And over here, what I'm going to say that this is going to be the result is, and I'm just going to put a colon. And over here, we're going to add, right? And I'm going to say result. 
and if I print this out you can see that this is going to be result is 30 right and again this is really good for testing right this is not what we're going to be doing for next whatever hours right we're not going to be learning Java this way right however this is really useful if you just want to quickly quickly test something right and over here a couple of things if we type help over here right this is going to show the commands that you can actually use then over here if you type list this is going to give you the list of your last commands right so basically if I type over here like this and if I type one right so this is going to say string first name Peter first name Peter right and if I just want to exit I just go over here exit and you can see that I mistyped it exit over here right and now it says J shell goodbye and we can do the same thing over here right so we can just say exit and I'm actually exiting the terminal right so this is going to be it for the JDK and next let's go ahead and download IntelliJ